Hi and welcome back to my channel. In the 25th episode title you're going to be visiting, I spoke about how the world and the church will be visited. It will be a visitation of judgment upon the world and a visitation of deliverance for the church. Then in the 26th episode titled Final Notice, Prepare Now or Perish Soon, I called our attention to the fact that judgment is already on this world. We are seeing that happen in the deterioration of the global economic situation that has been occurring over the last two years and that a global recession is predicted for the year 2023. Only a small number of faithful Christians have taken the time to read the scriptures and to commune with the Holy Spirit and they have the insight to know what is approaching. They are preparing wisely to endure the tribulation over the next few years because they know that it will be impossible to buy and sell at that time because of the enforcement of the mark of the beast. And I said in the previous video, they are like the five wise virgins that prepared to endure a whole night. Besides, the longer people take to invest in food and other essentials, the more expensive it is going to become. Eventually, may not even be available. This is why it is important that we take the time to read the scriptures and understand what the Lord Jesus Christ said about the times that we are living in. We will do well to remember what the Bible says in Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6, that God's people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. We are living in a time of unprecedented uncertainty when people all over the world are losing their employment. They are having to go home. They are going broke. They are going homeless. And they are going hungry. In this episode, I want to call our attention to the current developments with regards to the global job market. Tens of thousands of people from corporations around the world are being told to go home because those corporations do not have any jobs for them. Those corporations are in the process of cost cutting. For more than two decades, the tech industry was a reliable source for valuable stocks and high paying jobs. But in 2022, all that changed. In November, US companies Amazon and Meta laid off more than 21,000 workers. Twitter's new owner, billionaire Elon Musk, cut 3,700 employees, half of the workforce, citing the company was losing $4 million a day. Worldwide, some 138,000 jobs were cut in the industry, according to the website layoffs.fyi. The layoffs have impacted every tech sector, from semi-autonomous vehicles to social media. One U.S. analyst says job losses in the tech industry could be just the beginning. Big tech's been Teflon like up to this point. Clearly, going to see significant cost cutting, headcount cuts, I think, over the next six, nine months as the recession's now on the doorstep. Those employees who have been retrenched are going broke. To add to an already difficult situation, the banks are raising the housing loan interest rates, the mortgage payments have doubled over the last year. People are defaulting on their payments. The rate at which foreclosures are happening is frighteningly high. At the same time, the cost of renting a house is so prohibitively high and housing is becoming unaffordable. People are becoming homeless. But that is not the end of their suffering. People in most countries spend almost 75% of their family income on either rent or mortgage repayments and energy. There is very little left for food and other essentials. 
Besides, the price of food has increased by 60% and is still climbing. Many people are barely able to have even one meal a day. And soon, in the year 2023, that situation will turn worse. What we need to remember is what the Lord Jesus Christ said in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 45, that the rain falls on the righteous and the unrighteous. Christians are not exempt from the difficulties that the rest of the world is experiencing. But what Christians should know is that what is unfolding is not without warning. Bible warned us approximately 2,000 years ago about the times that we are living in. Let me read what that verse of scripture says. Revelation chapter 7 and verse 16 reads as follows. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. And the next verse for the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them unto living fountains of waters, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. When we read those verses, we need to remember that we are looking forward in time, seeing what the Apostle John saw. John described events that are occurring in our present and that will occur in our near future. That verse of scripture implies that many of them will go hungry and most of them will die because of starvation, because they are so unprepared for what is approaching. That verse of scripture also tells us that they thirsted. It is obvious that they were denied even the basic essentials for life. And then that verse speaks about them not having to be out in the sun and scorched by it anymore, which to my mind implies that they were homeless. It is not difficult to see why that is and why that will happen. We just saw that many of them have lost their employment and are unable to afford a roof over their heads. The biggest payment that every family makes every month is either a mortgage or rent if they do not already own a house. But without an income, they are losing the security of a place that they call home. Soon, many of them will endure even more suffering in that they will be forced to watch their loved ones go hungry, waste away, and die before their eyes, and they will be helpless to do anything about it. Here is a brief video of young people in China who are upgrading their skills and even acquiring a second college degree to compete and to score a job in a shrinking job market. Due to poor job opportunities, many are turning to further study, even if it leads to overqualification. A business model is evolving from the energy of these young adults. Similar to co-working offices, some are starting to book desks for studying by the hour. These people hope that their diligence will somehow pay off, and that they will be able to acquire a good job, even in a shrinking job market. Those professionals who have lost their employment and have taken loans to purchase a house are now in a very difficult situation. As I said earlier, their mortgage payments have more than doubled over the last year. This group of people have an uphill battle. They are struggling just to keep their families from becoming homeless and going hungry. The retired, which is the next group, are finding out that they cannot remain retired. These people who are pensioners and many of them who do not even have a pension are tightening their belts even further to a point 
that they will not be able to endure it. Many of them are living on just one meal a day. In the Oldham Food Bank, they've seen a major increase in demand, with people in work but on universal credit, now regularly among those relying on handouts to survive. This is the fifth time that Frank's been referred to the food bank. Just over a year ago, an injury prevented him from working. Now, despite being on universal credit, he cannot afford to eat. It feels as though um, I've been persecuted. Um, I've worked for 45 years, I've pay, I paid my taxes for 45 years, my insurance for 45 years, and now when we further down the line, when I need assistance, they can only offer me limited assistance, and I don't think that's right. And without the food bank? With, without the food bank, I wouldn't be here, I'd be dead, I'd be dead, dead of starvation. When they run out of their savings, they pawn their rings, their jewellery, just so that they can eat. 80, 120, okay? Everything has a price, and when the price of everything is going up, some are being left with very few options. Thank you, bye. At this pawnbrokers in Birmingham, we watched as throughout the day, a stream of people exchanged their rings, bracelets, electrical items, for cash to buy the basics. And 80 pounds. Okay. It is a heartbreaking choice that they have to make, whether to hold on to their memories or eat to stay alive. That is a very vulnerable and dangerous place to be because some people will sell the most precious thing that they have just to stay alive a little longer. And that is not without precedent. We read in the Bible that the Egyptians sold themselves to Pharaoh when they did not have anything else to sell. That is what will happen when the beast forces people to take the mark if they want to be able to work, buy and sell and stay alive. And unfortunately, many of them will take the mark of the beast. What they do not realize is that they are being deceived into thinking that they will be able to live when in reality they are signing their eternal damnation. As I reminded us earlier, Christians are not exempted from tribulation. I also reminded us of what the Lord Jesus Christ said in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 45, that the sun shines on the evil and the good, and the rain falls on the just and the unjust. Christians too will continue to experience the same problems that the rest of the world is experiencing. However, the true Christians will respond to adversity, to tribulation, to great tribulation, quite differently. I will discuss what that response is after I briefly discuss how the groups that I just described are coping with adversity in their own way. And what is actually happening to them. Even though they are trying to stay positive, upgrade their skills, acquire an additional college degree, hope that the future will be brighter, or if they are already professionals and are unemployed, they hope that they will be able to find a new job. And if they are pensioners, they hope that the government will rescue them. But as the days turn into weeks, into months, into years, the financial pressure eventually will take its toll. And we are already seeing that happen. They constantly worry of whether or not they'd be able to find a job, of whether they would be able to keep their families from becoming homeless, of whether they would be able to put food on the table. Their house of cards that they built over the years are now collapsing right before their eyes. Isn't that reminiscent of what the Lord Jesus Christ said, a wise man builds his house upon a rock? not on sand. Have we been building our lives on the Lord Jesus Christ, the unshakable rock? 
there is a new pandemic. It is referred to as the hidden pandemic. It is a pandemic of anxiety and depression. People are turning to substance abuse to escape the reality of life. The World Health Organization has reported that there is a 25% increase in the prevalence of depression since the COVID-19 pandemic. It is understandable that when people are under so much of pressure and that the future looks bleak and so hopeless that their mental health is affected. The Bible in 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7 clearly tells us that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love, a sound mind. Christians who have read the Bible know and may have even memorized that verse, but they still worry because they have only given mental assent to the word of God. They have a superficial understanding of the scriptures. But a Christian who has truly studied the scriptures and has a living relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ will not be intimidated by unemployment, by homelessness, by hunger, or even death. If you are tempted to think that that response to the tribulation that we are living through is a denial of reality, I would say to you that such a response is natural. That is what is expected of a person who does not know the Lord Jesus Christ personally and who has not read his word. However, those who are communing with the Holy Spirit and are able to discern the times that we are living in know that it is time to go home. We are not looking to build a house of cards here. The resurrection is not far off. So all the signs that we are seeing tell us that that glorious event called the resurrection is very, very near. We can actually be joyful even in the midst of tribulation because we know all this human suffering will be behind us very soon. That is what the Lord Jesus Christ said in Luke chapter 21, reading from verse 8 to 26. He said, look up when you see these signs, look up for your redemption is drawing near. True Christians will never look down. They will never become depressed. They will never be anxious. We will be joyful and look for our redemption is drawing near. No one knows the day and the hour when the resurrection will happen. But not too long from now, the true Christians who are the remnant and who truly love the Lord Jesus Christ and honor him and patiently endure the tribulation will soon be in that group standing before the throne of God where they will never again hunger or thirst. The tears from their eyes will be wiped away. That is what the Apostle John described. Let me read it to you. After this I beheld and lo, a great multitude which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne and upon the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders, and the four beasts, and fell before the throne on their faces, and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. You and I, do not have to guess who those people are. And the Apostle John did not have to guess either. The angel answered that question for John and for everyone who will take the time to read God's word. Allow me to read what the angel said to John. And I said unto him, Sir, 
Thou knowest, and he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. The picture that I get when I read the next verse, which, which is verse 15, is that they are safe and sound and are back home in the loving embrace of God Almighty. It is like a lost child who has been through trauma and is now back in the comforting embrace and love of its parent. That is the happy ever after for those who put their trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and who truly and genuinely honor him as Lord here and now. If you do not remember anything else about this message, please remember that if you recognize and acknowledge your own sin and know that only the Lord Jesus Christ can forgive and save you, and if you repent of your sin and ask the Lord Jesus Christ to forgive you, and if you put your trust in him, you will have a bright future irrespective of all that you see happening around you, you can be truly joyful. It really is time to be thankful to God for all that he has blessed us with. And we should be able to demonstrate our thankfulness to the Lord Jesus Christ by sharing what we have with the less fortunate of the house of faith. Let us remember that one day, everyone will stand before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, who is the Lord Jesus Christ, and give an account of themselves. At that time, he will show favor to those who honored him. This is what is recorded in Matthew chapter 25, verses 34 to 40. Let me read it to you. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was an hunger, and you gave me meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. Naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and he came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered and fed thee? or thirsty, and gave thee drink? When saw we thee, a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? And the king shall answer, and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. During these very difficult times, we will have plenty of opportunities to be kind, and compassionate and extend our help to those in need in the house of faith. Let us pray. Father God, I pray for every viewer that they would be encouraged by your word and that they would know that their future is truly bright in the Lord Jesus Christ. Help us, Lord, to look beyond our personal needs and to be compassionate towards the less privileged in the house of faith. Help us, Lord, to demonstrate the love of the Lord Jesus Christ to a lost and dying world, that they too may come to the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ and have eternal life. In the precious, holy, and matchless name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray. Amen.